Good morning, folks. We've got the last 24 hours on our star with an update on geo conditions. Very unusual quake in the United States yesterday. We're going to take a look at a baby star, allegedly, get a window into long-term climate cycles, and a mission that has the potential to tell them a lot more than mainstream climate scientists may want to hear. We are starting with our star and find the southern plasma filament did release, did so after having turned away enough to not be directed at Earth. Corona Hole is going to be another story still incoming on the south and will have its solar wind impact our planet's magnetic field over the weekend. Active regions coming in behind it are still small, simply set up in terms of magnetic fields. There is one larger umbra, but it appears all by its lonesome at the moment. We'll keep an eye open for umbral development around that incoming sunspot. More off to seismicity. The most interesting quake of the last day was the third largest ever to be recorded in Texas. It was luckily centered in a remote region of the west, but was allegedly felt all the way in Austin and San Antonio. Let's hope it's not a foreshock. And that also goes for the Puerto Rico Trench, where the seismicity is rising in magnitude as well. We'll have eyes on the shaking today. But right now, we're heading out to space where they claim James Webb is looking at a baby star just undergoing stellar ignition, and that the darkness at the sides is due to the ring of material around it blocking the starlight from reflecting off the surrounding material at its equatorial region, making it look dark. Now that part I can get behind, but folks, a star that has recently gone nova can also look and act like a baby star, and I see way too many shock fronts in the expanded view to simply write them off as not possibly being due to stellar blasts. It's pretty though. Up next is an article from MIT that is mm, just okay in terms of its writing, but it makes an important point about a not-so-bad paper at all where there is no runaway warming or cooling on this planet. It has safety mechanisms that work very well. When it's too cold, clouds are reduced and let in more sunlight. When heating melts the poles, it chills the oceans and adds to cloud reflection that cools the planet. The paper does more than just the 100,000 year time scale, it goes down to the Heinrich level time scale, where every couple thousand years there is a melting of the ice at the poles and it jerks the planet back into cold. They also scale up to the glacial cycle and beyond. It is the paper in the journals that's, well, much better to read. Lastly, folks, climate scientists must be nervous right now. There's an atmospheric electric circuit that connects the top of the sky to the ground through the area that has what we call the weather. There is a similar circuit from the solar atmosphere that exchanges plasma along magnetic fields directly with the Earth and all the planets in the solar system. And they are about to study the interchange point, where that energy actually comes into the auroral oval, the magnetic space hurricane of particle precipitation, at both 100 and 250 miles up, a dual rocket mission. If they're not careful, they might do something like prove how much the sun actually forces the weather in long-term climate. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about these topics below the video with your key resources and check out Observer Ranch. Be a part of the future where the new best way to support the Observer's community is through our nonprofit. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.